Hey everyone, this week's episode of Tech News Day is sponsored by Stitch Fix and by Fleur. More about them later, but first some news. And I guess we might as well start things off with some more E3 recapping. Our previous video covered stuff from over the weekend into Monday afternoon, which was the vast bulk of the big E3 news. But on Tuesday, Nintendo closed out the conferences with Nintendo Direct 2019. And as someone who hasn't touched a Nintendo product in 10 years, I'm just going to toss this one off to Ricky. It's... A wonderful console. <laughs> I'm sure it is. Uh, okay, so briefly, Breath of the Wild is getting a sequel, uh, which is cool and exciting, but it's probably not for a while, and it doesn't even have a release date yet, so... Or a title. Yeah. Probably going to be the launch title for the Switch Pro. Yeah, they Remember didn't that. talk about that. They canceled one of them, I think, so... Yeah. Uh, anyways, it's just a minute of cutscene clips and a screen saying that it's in development, which is, again... It's the bare minimum that these companies <laughs> yeah. have to do to get this people excited. This exists in some capacity somewhere. It's That's the thing, is when we talked about Skate 4, or last year when they talked about uh, Elder Scrolls yeah, 6, Elder, just like, Elder Scrolls 6, we're working on it. And this year they didn't Whoa! say a damn thing about it, which yeah. was weird. Uh, anyways, Super Smash Ultimate is getting Banjo-Kazooie and Erdrick from Dragon Quest as playable characters. Yeah. That's exciting to people, I'm <laughs> sure. I'm not hating on it, just haven't played the game. Uh, they showed off gameplay from Luigi's Mansion 3 and a Dark Crystal Tactics game. That one actually looks cool. Looks really cool. I, but I'm also, I'll play like any tactics game. I just like the genre. <laughs> well, it's a good movie too, so great to show your kids. Uh, they're, they're also doing a remake of 1993's Link's Awakening. And where it's super cute. Link, it's where Link finds out that he's gay. Yeah. He's like, wow. Yeah. I'm like attracted, sexual attracted awakening. Yeah. Uh, they announced that The Witcher 3 is coming to the Switch. Cool. Amazing. Yeah. I looked at some of the screenshots and you can definitely tell there's a huge graphical downgrade there, but that's not the point. You can play it on the go. <laughs> uh, and they're also bringing Resident Evil 5 and 6 and Alien Isolation. Cool. So if you want to have jump scares on a plane. Yeah. Wait, if you play Alien Isolation, they should force you to like put a big blanket over your head <laughs> yeah. and play it in the dark. Yeah, absolutely. It's the only way it turns on. Yeah. Uh, also, in, in 2020, there's going to be a new No More Heroes game and the biggest news of all, an Animal Crossing game. I don't. I still a new don't. One. I it, I don't know anything about it. It looks like it's just a bunch of like yard work. So, but people were going wild for this. Yeah, I mean, I played Stardew Valley a lot, and people yeah, it looks like similar oh, to that. You would like uh, Animal Crossing, and I was watching videos on some of the other ones, and I was just like, nah, this is even more cutesy than Stardew Valley. Well, at least Too Stardew cute. Stardew Valley is like you know. 8-bit or 16-bit graphics or whatever, so it has like a certain uh, appeal in yeah. that sense. I don't really like the bubbly cute characters, but to each their own, people fucking love Animal Crossing. People are fine. losing their damn minds, and yeah. you know what? Good for you. Yeah. All right, cool, great stuff. Uh, also, our friend Dave, CEO of New Blood Interactive, has a new game, and mm -hmm. because he asked nicely on Twitter, I guess we'll talk about it now. Uh, it's called Maximum Action, and it's been out in early access since last September, but now with the New Blood acquisition, it'll be heading to full release a lot quicker, and the game looks fun as hell. It's super violent, it's got a retro Hotline Miami sort of vibe, and it's clearly inspired by the John Woo action movies of the 80s and 90s. Uh, definitely worth a look if you're into like retro id software style shooters like New Blood's previous release, Dusk, which was also fun as hell. Yeah. All right, Dave. You can put the gun down now, and uh, now you owe us. That's how he. That's how he markets mm -hmm. with guns, guns and games, guns and life. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's pretty much it for E3. Oh wait, never mind. <laughs> Doctor Disrespect. He got himself banned from Twitch. And why, you might ask? Because either him or everyone around him just had no idea that it would be wrong to film inside of a bathroom. Yeah, uh, with who could have seen this coming? Bringing uh, a camera crew into the bathroom anytime you go in there to live stream you and anyone who just unlucky enough to be uh, taking a piss at that moment. Mm -hmm. Who could have guessed that this would set off some uh, alarm bells back at Twitch HQ? Uh, also, it's against the law. And yeah, they did it. Too. <laughs> so it's like one time it's like, oh, man, oh, complete lapse of judgment. We shouldn't have done that, obviously, or whatever. And, you know, he'd probably still get a ban for it or, or a suspension for it. Yeah. Uh, maybe a fine. Uh, but three times they went. They went no one needs to times. go to the bathroom that much. Yeah. That, it's not clear if it's a permanent ban or a temporary ban, but uh, it's not a good look. Definitely it's, a ban from the cameraman for working uh, anytime in the near future. <sighs> Might be. Yeah. So. Uh, anyway, yeah, that's uh, dumb as hell, and also probably the biggest news to come out of all of E3 this well, year. Well, the best part of it was uh, was was the uh, the tweet. Uh, it was uh, my first IRL stream, <laughs> and last. Well, uh, yeah. 
But uh, no, he gave it the old doctor disrespect try. Yeah. And broke a few laws in the process and may have to register as a sex offender. <laughs> I don't think he'll have to do that, but no. uh, the the new uh, joke going around is Dr. Disrespect the Law. So that's uh, at least, you know, the online uh, comment community got yeah. some fun out of it, I guess. Oh, boy. It is. Uh, it's very hot. It is about 95 degrees in here. Get ready for three months of us, <laughs> four months of us complaining about the heat. No, I'm going to go buy an air conditioner this week. Okay, good. I've, <laughs> I, I've, I've hit my breaking point. I bought one for my home earlier today because yeah. I hit my breaking point there. I'm like, I can't do another fucking summer of this shit. Yeah. I dropped like fucking four hundred fifty dollars on a uh, air conditioner that can fill an entire house. Good, it's well, coming need, on Thursday. We I'm need excited. one for here. God damn it! Yeah. Thanks, Patreon. Anyways, with E three officially out of the way, we can now talk about the more typical stuff that we cover on this show. Starting with some not so typical good news. Ooh! Now, last week, Amazon hosted a conference called Re Mars, focused on machine learning, automation, robotics, and space. And Robert Downey Jr. was there giving what at first seemed to be a pretty typical celebrity keynote address for this kind of event, where he was talking about Marvel and Iron Man and how crazy and awesome all the recent advancements in tech are. Thanks, you guys. Enjoy the conference. Except, no, he then shifted into talking about climate change and the amount of carbon in our air. And uh, here's what he said. Recently, I was at a table with super smart, impressive expert folks about six months ago, and the following statement was made. Between robotics and technology, we could probably clean up the planet significantly, if not entirely, within a decade. Being essentially a 54-year-old child, I said, I'd love to get out in front of that. Let's friggin' do it. Let's commit to a process. Let's form a coalition. And that did not inspire the reaction I imagined. It was dead silent. Worse. It was like I crapped in the kiddie pool, peed in everyone's cornflakes, and forced them all into an elevator stuck between floors and farted a litter of Doberman puppy farts. Uh, so okay. yeah, he conceded that yes, it might be a kumbaya pipe dream and a logistical clusterfuck, but that quote, dedicating myself to maybe one small part of making good on that statement, even in abject failure, would still be the best idea I've ever had. And with that, he announced the Footprint Coalition a new organization dedicated to bringing together experts in AI, robotics, and nanotechnology with the goal of erasing humanity's carbon footprint over the next decade. Cool. Uh, who knows how much the Footprint Coalition will be able to accomplish, but it is great to see one of the most famous and most wealthy actors on Earth getting behind something like this instead of just uh, sitting around enjoying how rich and famous he is. The mm -hmm. uh, Footprint Coalition, they won't be making any big announcements until sometime next year, but we look forward to seeing what comes of it. Yeah. I mean, any fucking attention this problem can get uh, especially from a guy with as much reach as he yeah a guy as, as does, famous yeah. as him who also doesn't need to work another day in his life and seems to know that like he, he mentioned he's like <laughs> he's like yeah I'm not uh, I'm, I'm quite a bit between jobs right now no. uh, so not that it matters but yeah. <laughs> uh, I just hope that he doesn't go off the walls and end up like Elon Musk where he's trying to be the one developing the robotics and stuff I think Robert Downey Jr. is smart enough to know that he's not that smart about that stuff. Yeah. Like, I, that, that's the kind of, like, energy you need. Just be like... I don't know you, what to do. I don't know what to I do. But I want to put my, my influence yeah. and my money behind it. You people keep saying we can do all these amazing things. Well, I'll put your, my happen. money where your mouth is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so hopefully something comes out of that. I mean... Yeah. Also, side note back to E3. The Avengers game looks like shit. Which one? Uh, I don't know. The one that I saw the trailer for where they're fighting on a bridge in San Francisco. Oh. <laughs> well, the main thing is it just looks very generic. They obviously don't have the like likeness releases for any of the movie yeah. actors. Obviously, yeah. Um, and so, yeah. I don't know. It looks like a game that should have came out 10 years ago. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it might be good. We'll see. But also, whatever. Yeah. We'll and in, in other celebrity pop culture news that's also about tech, the band Radiohead recently became the victim of a hack with the hacker somehow gaining access to singer Tom York's computer and making off with an absolute treasure trove of unreleased material from the sessions uh, for the seminal 1997 album, OK Computer, and then holding those recordings for ransom. $150,000 or all of it gets leaked to the internet. Uh, let's let guitarist Johnny Greenwood tell the rest of the story in an iPhone note appropriately titled Walter Sobchak vs. Bunny's Toe. So instead of complaining much or ignoring it, we released all 18 hours on Bandcamp in aid of Extinction Rebellion, just for the next 18 days. So for 18 pounds, you can find out if we should have paid that ransom. Never intended for public consumption, though some clips did reach the cassette in the OK Computer reissue, it's only tangentially interesting and very, very long. Not a phone download. Rainy out, isn't it, though? 
Uh, Extinction Rebellion is a, a direct action activist group focused on fighting climate change and biodiversity loss. So Radiohead is making the most of a shitty situation here, and they're trying to pay it forward, which is nice. Mm-hmm. Uh, all this stuff's ending up on the internet anyway, so why not do it on your own terms? Mm-hmm. And it's uh, 18 pounds. It's around 23 U.S. dollars. That gets you 18 hours of audio. Pretty good deal. So uh, hail to the thief. Sure. Who gets nothing? Yeah. Uh, moving on to an update on a story we talked about a little while back. Remember that whole thing about how companies like TurboTax managed to sneak a little provision into Congress's latest tax overhaul, which made it illegal for the IRS to provide any sort of free tax preparation software? Most of the groundwork covering that story came from nonprofit news outlet ProPublica, who simply would not let the topic rest, and they used it as a jumping off point to explore other various ways that TurboTax and other similar companies were screwing over the taxpaying public. You see, previously, TurboTax and friends had gotten Congress to block the IRS from making their own tax preparation software by promising that doing so would be entirely unnecessary. Instead, they argued, the government should create a free market program called Free File, where all the tax prep companies would offer free tax preparation to all low-income taxpayers. Now, they did that, but they also basically hid their Free File programs where no one could ever conceivably find them. Uh, TurboTax's Free File option was simply impossible to find if you just started off on TurboTax.com. Instead, at TurboTax.com, you were presented with a totally different free program with way more restrictions on it that basically served as a way for them to lure you in with the word free and then upsell you if your tax situation was anything more complicated than a single W-2 for the year. Yeah, so the new tax bill would have made this bullshit free file compromise between TurboTax and the IRS permanent. But it would seem that in this instance, ProPublica may have actually been successful in their attempt to hold the powerful accountable. Uh, It's being reported this week that the tax bill is now being amended with all the free file shit removed as it goes to the vote in the Senate. This news comes immediately following a letter sent sent to the sponsors of the bill signed by 75 academics and tax experts strongly urging the free file provisions be removed from the bill. And meanwhile, last month, both the IRS and the state of New York apparently launched investigations into abuse of the free file program by TurboTax and H&R Block. Uh, A lot could still happen before this bill gets turned into law, but uh, it's a small victory. The small victory against lobbyists is still a victory, damn it. Yeah. I mean, it's not a big one. It's it's not even really a win. It's something that should have never been on the table to begin with. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, at least in this case, like, it, enough people were writing about it and talking about it uh, and uh, probably calling their representatives about it that mm-hmm. uh, public pressure actually worked. But is there still red alert? Weather warnings every day on news stations around the country. Well, you know that uh, guy didn't show up to work ever again. Every every weatherman's gonna quit their fucking job. Sinclair's gonna have to get like a fucking talking dog or some what shit. What do we need weathermen for? People just ask their Alexis. God damn it. Anyways, it's time for a word from this week's sponsors, starting with Stitch Fix. Personal style's like a fingerprint. Everyone has their own. Whatever your style, the expert stylists at Stitch Fix are ready to help you express yourself. Express yourself! Don't, we'll get banned. Oh. Stitch Fix is an online personal styling service that delivers your favorite clothing brands right to your door. To get started, go to stitchfix.com slash newsday, answer some questions about your preferred style, and your personal shopper will ship you a box of clothes, shoes, and accessories. Uh, There's no commitment required, and you only pay for what you keep. Shipping, exchanges, and returns are always free. Plus, the $20 styling fee is automatically applied towards anything you keep from your box. You'll never have to worry about looking good again with Stitch Fix. So try it. Uh, get started today at stitchfix.com slash newsday, all one word, and you'll get an extra 25% off when you keep everything in your box. That's stitchfix.com slash newsday. I got a summer box coming this week, I believe. Mm. Gonna need it. I can't be wearing black jeans and a black shirt yeah, all day, every day. I need some light colors, some mm-hmm. shorts. This episode is also sponsored by Fleur. Mm. We all know scent is closely linked to memory. Why not create some special memories this summer with the perfect fragrance from Fleur? Fleur's like the French word for flower, but it's uh, spelled way, way different, uh, P-H-L-U-R. Fleur makes great smelling, clean, and sustainable fragrances. Every Fleur scent is for anyone. All that matters is what you like, meaning none of this is designed for a man, none of this is designed for a woman. They're just good scents. And unlike other fragrance companies, Fleur is transparent and discloses every ingredient and why it's there. Make new scent memories with Fleur. Go to Fleur.com today. That is P. H-L-U-R dot com. Use promo code NEWSDAY, again, all one word, and you'll get 20% off your first custom Fleur sample set. 
You go to Fleur.com, you click the Try at Home button at the top. Uh, you're going to choose three scents that you want to try and then use our promo code NEWSDAY at checkout and get 20% off. This also gets you credit towards a full-size bottle of your favorite scent. Again, promo code NEWSDAY at Fleur.com. Get those free samples, 20% off, P-H-L-U-R.com. We're going to need it because we are, I am covered in sweat already some, from being in here. I need some Fleur right now. And I forgot to put on deodorant, so... Get ready for that. Oh, no. Get ready for me as a customer in the lift ride home. Oh, no. Yeah. Not I, bad yet. I put on deodorant twice today. Well, twice. I took, to be fair, I took a shower before coming in. Uh, and, I, and I took that shower right. for two reasons. To be a nice person who is clean. And also because it was so hot in my apartment that a shower was the only escape I had. I, I, yeah, I hear that. Yeah. Anyways, uh, we were just talking about taxes and the IRS back there. Let's move on now to some different government news. Uh, you know how every so often we'll hear from reputable sources and from white hat hackers that the digital voting machines used in elections across this country are just full of flaws and extremely vulnerable to be tampered with? Uh, this is usually followed by a manufacturer of one of those machines downplaying the whole thing and insisting that there's nothing to see here. Uh, that's what happened last year after some attendees at the security conference DEFCON exposed some vulnerabilities in voting machines sold by the company ES&S. And, and then ES&S's CEO Tom Burt came out saying that not only is everything fine, but it was actually uh, the hackers themselves who were putting our elections in danger. Hmm. Well, ES&S actually threatened to sue people involved in that DEFCON demonstration, and Tom Burt actually had the audacity to say... We believe that exposing technology in these kinds of environments makes hacking elections easier, not harder. And we suspect that our adversaries are paying very close attention. Oh, fuck you. Yeah, yeah. Weird. Weird take on this. Mm -hmm. uh, in other words, just trust the machines. Just trust that they are secure. Can't you just trust us? <laughs> Don't test them. Because that doing that, it would help the bad guys who are trying to rig our elections. Yeah. They gave you all the clues, Mr. Badman. Uh, anyways, Tom Bird and his company were roundly criticized by both the cybersecurity community and several members of Congress. And in a stunning turn of events, it sounds like Tom Bird and ESNS actually learned a lesson. You love to see it. This is a this is an uplifting episode of News Dump or uh, Tech News Day for the most part so far. Yeah. Uh, in an op-ed published on Friday, written by Tom Burt, he wrote that ESNS will no longer sell paperless voting machines as the primary device for casting ballots in a jurisdiction, and he urged Congress to pass legislation that requires a paper record for every voter, along with the establishment of a mandatory security testing program for all voting machines. And following the op-ed, an ESNS spokesperson told TechCrunch. ESNS supports third-party white hat ethical research and penetration testing. So quite a reversal. Yeah. Uh, to be fair, this complete 180 on the topic is probably largely motivated by the fact that there's already a lot of momentum in Congress for this kind of legislation. They're, they're getting out ahead of it. Yeah. Uh, and, and making themselves look like the good guys in the process. But it is nice that they're getting out ahead of it instead of dragging their heels and insisting that everything's okay. Mm -hmm. When clearly, clearly not. Yeah. Clearly it's not. No. Hopefully more of these voting machine companies do the same. Um, I don't know. The fact that, like, here in California, all of our, we've always had paper ballots. Yeah. Uh, like, I see these fucking touchscreen things. I'm like, why would you trust this thing? This, thing, this machine's 20 years old. Yeah. There's no way this is safe. Well, anyways, look, we know ballot machines and tax software, they're not exactly sexy topics. But uh, here's a U.S. government story that is, sort of. Uh, a little over a year ago, uh, Gizmodo reported on the fact that a number of government websites were misconfigured in a way that allowed anyone to create redirect links using their domains. It was mostly used for porn, for some reason. So a lot of examples were basically something like amberalert.gov with a bunch of other shit after that in the URL, leading whoever clicked on the innocent looking URL to some particularly hardcore pornography, including bestiality. Now, we don't exactly have the expertise to explain why this was possible, but it was, and it was possible across an alarming number of government websites. And, uh, yeah, over a year later, it turns out this is still a problem for a number of government domains that didn't fix the bug the first time around. Why are you exposing this, Elliot? Then you're giving the bad guys, I, I, yeah, the I'm pornographers, the, bad guys. the people who spread the pornography, you're giving them the clues. The best way to talk about problems is to not talk about them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They'll get, they'll fix themselves. Mm -hmm. That's like, well, that's why I don't go to the doctor. Yeah. Well, yeah. Also because of the crippling cost. If the doctor talks about all my health problems, you're just helping the health problem. Yeah. Can't have cancer if you don't tell me. 
Anyway, while being able to link uh, to porn with a government URL is bad enough, the real danger here is if someone makes a website that actually looks like the government websites that they're piggyback piggybacking on and then uses that to fish personal data from people who don't look too closely at the URL. And it was reported last week that that's exactly what one foreign hacker has been doing. They would send people messages luring them to fake local government websites where they would happily hand over personal information, including social security numbers, under the pretense that they were on a real government website. And it's apparently very easy to fix this. This is why you don't hear about this happening, because it's like web design fucking 101. Mm -hmm. uh, so hopefully, someone down there at big government, it's actually little little government, Okay. That, yeah. uh, someone down there at the government, uh, you know, flips the switch to turn that off. Um, but then again, this all should have been fixed a year ago when it was first discovered and reported on. So who the hell knows? Done and done. Yeah. We ignored it. What else did you want us to do? We, we did everything we could, which was absolutely nothing. Yeah. Because we refused to have any kind of fucking tech-savvy people on payroll. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, a big problem. Anyways, that's it for today. Uh, if you're a Patreon supporter, we put up a new weekly podcast uh, for you on Monday that you should check out. Uh, if you're a YouTube member, we posted that over on the community tab of this channel. Uh, so, yeah, we talk about E3 and a bunch of other stuff in there, answer some questions that were submitted by the supporters. Uh, if you don't have access to either of those things, become a member on YouTube by clicking the Join button or head over to our Patreon page. There's a link right down in the description below. Uh, throw $5 at it and unlock all of the podcasts. Yeah. There you go. There you go. And uh, also, yeah, check out yesterday's video where we dug down into all of the E3 news that we didn't cover today uh, and uh, talked about someone that was uh, leaking everything. Uh, and A also, leaker. We have another uh, recent episode of Weekly Weird News about the FBI's investigation into Bigfoot. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. Check it out. Bye-bye. Bye. Whew!